don't really know how to start this video, to be honest. Um, okay, last week, Nintendo emailed me to inform me they no longer wanted to collaborate with me on my channel or at all. They even asked me to please remove any mention of the Nintendo brand ambassador program from your social channels, bios, email signatures, etc. Essentially saying, you do not work with us anymore. You are not uh, a Nintendo brand ambassador anymore. So please don't tell anyone that you are. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to make it public or talk about it, because initially the way they worded it made it seem like there was a new program uh, and maybe I hadn't been switched over to it yet. Maybe I will get switched over to the new one, uh, but I decided to tweet about it. And that tweet ended up getting some traction and a couple of people picked it up and, and made articles about Nintendo's changing their ambassador program and, and blah, 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 based on, on what I said. And all I said, I don't have the tweet in front of me, but all I essentially said was Nintendo has decided to no longer continue my membership because they're switching over to some new program, which is what I thought I was told. Um, but I had a great time while I was working with them. Uh, I thanked the team at Golan, uh, which to be clear, um, Golan is hired by Nintendo to run the Nintendo uh, ambassador program. But I mean, the email I was sent was signed with the Golan team on behalf of Nintendo. Uh, and when you say it's on behalf of Nintendo and, and the email is essentially saying that I'm not a good fit for their brand anymore, I feel like this has come from Nintendo, at least that's, that's what they've said. I can't show you this email, I, I'll, tr I'll show you bits of it, uh, but it does say this, this message contains information that may be confidential or privileged, and I'm not trying to burn any bridges here. Uh, I'm not mad, I'm definitely disappointed, <laughs> like a good parent would say. So I'm not, I'm not angry, I'm not, this isn't an attack. I'm not asking everyone to get up on the internet and and tweet people and be like, well, what, what, what do you mean? But as I said, I wasn't going to make a whole video on it when I initially received just this email. But then the very next day, Nintendo emailed me again with something extremely confusing that I didn't understand. And so I clarified what the heck was going on. Like, am I in this program? Am I not in this program? And they reiterated that I was not. And they told me why I was not. And the why feels like a slap in the face. And again, like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, woe is me, right? Like, there's so much bigger things happening in the world right now that make this, it's nothing. This is nothing. But I ultimately decided to make this video because I made the tweet, it picked up traction, a lot of people saw it, and a lot of people had questions. And I tried to address those questions, the main one being, what does this mean for your channel, now that you're no longer working with Nintendo? And what I don't think a lot of people realize, and something I wanted to address, is as much as I enjoyed working with Nintendo, as much as I enjoyed being on their program with them, and, and feeling like, you know, this this brand I have built, this channel I have built, that's so closely tied to Nintendo, to, to actually be collaborating with Nintendo, to be able to call myself a brand ambassador, and have them send me game codes every now and then, it made me feel, I guess, more legitimized, but it also just made me feel closer to Nintendo on, on er with everything I do, and it was a really cool feeling. I mean, I grew up with an NES in my house. Like, I grew up playing Nintendo games. If, if you were to tell little tiny kid me that one day not only would I be a semi-successful YouTuber making content about all these games you grew up with and more, but Nintendo themselves would want to send you their games to talk about because they appreciate what you do. I think my, my, little, my little kid heart would explode with excitement. So to lose that is obviously upsetting. At the same time, nothing will change. Because again, I love Nintendo. I'm not going to stop talking about Nintendo out of spite. Um, I love them with all of my heart. I, I love the Switch. Nintendo and me is synonymous and it has been ever since my channel has existed on the platform. But what I think a lot of people don't understand, again, as much as I love, loved being on the program, how little they actually did. Which is why it feels like a slap in the face for them to not want to work with me anymore. Because they didn't really have to do anything. And as far as I can see, 
looking online and and the feedback that I got, no one else got dropped. So it was just me. And when you do as little as they they do, it's it's almost like going out of your way <laughs> to drop me from the program. But here's how it went down. I I received an email seven days ago, so literally a week ago. It was a very it was a very chain looking email. Like it was sent to me, but it wasn't addressed by the people I usually work with, my direct contacts at the company. It was addressed by the Golan team on behalf of Nintendo. So I think it this went out to a lot of people. And I'm not gonna read it verbatim or word for word because again, I'm gonna paraphrase it so I don't hopefully get in trouble. But it says they are taking a different direction. They'll continue to give me access to certain things, like the game codes they give me and possibly events, which I don't know what events they could be because I never get invited to anything, but while they'd like to do that, they can't continue my membership at this time. And there's a new program starting, they threw they they threw in there. Uh, and that confused me because all Nintendo has, all this company's ever done for me is give me codes and sometimes invite me to E3 and they're saying that they'll continue to do that, but I can't be in the program anymore. So they can keep doing everything they were doing, but they don't want to be associated with me. And that's the thing that was like, well, how, hold up a minute. <laughs> so literally what you're telling me is the only thing you want to change here. You don't want me to stop reviewing your games. You want to keep giving me the games because obviously I sell a lot of games. I, I mean, I'm an influencer. I hate that word, but I, and I don't try to be, but love it or hate it, I'm an influencer on the platform as far as Nintendo goes, I'm sure, I'm sure. And you can let me know down below, like what have I convinced you to pick up? Because I've reviewed so many things. I've talked about so many games and the Switch in general. I, every day people tell me I bought the Switch because of you, I bought this because of you and I love that. So clearly Nintendo doesn't wanna lose that because I make them money, but they don't wanna be associated with me anymore. Initially, I said, okay, fine. Um, did I do anything wrong, though? Was it anything I did? I, it felt like a bad breakup. <laughs> like, it felt like, like they were breaking up with me, and, I, and they were like, it's not, it's not you, Wood. It's us. <laughs> On behalf of Nintendo, it's us. So I said, well, did, did I do anything? Like, you, like, come on. Come on. Don't give me that tired old excuse. I've been broken up with before, I think. <laughs> Actually, I think I always... Never mind. <laughs> I've given that excuse before. I know what it really means. I did something wrong, didn't I? So I said, what did I do wrong? Paraphrasing even what I said. Um, and then they said, paraphrasing again, it had nothing to do with your content. And that was the first day that they emailed me. So when they said it has nothing to do with your content, that's when I made my tweet. Because I figured, well, then I can't be the only one. They said it's a case by case basis. So I can't be the only one. I made my tweet. And I was the only one. <laughs> and people started speculating when I made that tweet initially, like what, what it would do to upset Nintendo. Uh, and a lot of people were quick to point out that my last video on the channel was a mod video where I, where I modded and I broke Breath of the Wild. I modded it to holy heck. And Nintendo typically doesn't like stuff like that. But Nintendo already said it wasn't my content. And I looked at that video and, and I... I did, I don't think that's the case. Even now, I don't think that's the case. Because Nintendo is very quick to uh, delete mod videos, to claim them, whatever, to get rid of them. And uh, Nintendo obviously knows who I am. We've worked together for a while. And so if they had a problem with it, they would have said something. I know they would have. And they didn't. And you could say, well, this is saying something. But let me let me continue. The thing that made this most baffling was the day after, or two days after I put up that mod video... I believe. I could be a day off. Nintendo sent me a code for Minecraft Dungeons. They asked, Well, they asked me if I wanted a code. They sent it a couple days... A, a day late, actually. Because Nintendo never sends codes early anymore. Which is a whole other thing we can get into. Um, and and, it le and it, what, what I mean by... We'll get into it. I'll get into it quickly. Is This isn't going to change my content at all. Because Nintendo was barely helping. They would send codes on the day... If I was lucky, sometimes the day after, you know, on the day I'm going to go and buy it physical. Like, I very rarely don't buy a Nintendo game physical. You guys know me. You've seen my games. So codes I usually just end up giving away because I'm like, too little, too late. But they sent me Minecraft Dungeons. Then 
they sent me this email the day after saying, See ya. The day after? Just to pile on the confusion, Nintendo asked me if I wanted the 2K games on Switch. They asked me if I wanted Bioshock Borderland. The same person who had, the same contact who had just sent me the email telling me that, you know, they were going to send me things still, but they didn't want to work with me anymore, asked me if I wanted the Borderlands and Bioshock and XCOM. And, you know, I, I'd already bought them because that was the day the game came out. I bought them in the morning. But I said yes. <laughs> Because I wanted to see if they would send them, or if it was a mistake, or an automated email, and then they sent them. So, I emailed back, and I said, I'm a little surprised to see this. I think I'm confused about the last email. That's what I said. Um, and then, they replied with, sorry about the confusion. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. So that's when I was like, okay, I gotta figure this out. So I sent them a ton of questions because they said I could ask. I asked, is there currently a new program, but I didn't qualify for it? Does this mean that if that's true, that creators on the old program are automatically carried over to this new one already? Or will everyone on the old program eventually have their memberships canceled and maybe I was first? To which the reply essentially said, paraphrasing, there's a new program in effect now. So if you have a favorite creator that you know is a Nintendo brand ambassador, they are on the new program. I, as far as I talk to my friends that are on the program, no one received an email about shifting over to a new program. So nobody got notified about a new program. I was really the only one that got emailed about a new program in effect right now. And I found out because I didn't qualify for it. And I was the only one, I guess. Unless there's, there might be other creators out there that, I don't know, maybe they're smaller creators and it just didn't get back to me. But you would think that someone would be like, hey, the my my favorite YouTuber, Billy Joe Bob, uh, also got kicked. You're not alone, Wood. No, I'm, I think I'm alone. But here's the kicker. Yeah, I said that it was a, a slap in the face. And this part, I guess it's upsetting because I don't really know what they're trying to say. And I'm going to have to read this one a little bit more closely to what they said. So hopefully I won't get in trouble, um, but I, it, paraphrasing won't do it justice. Content creators for the program are evaluated on several things, including their passion for Nintendo, their social following, the quality and brand friendliness of their content. So these are the things in this, this at this point, by the way, you might have gathered, this is personalized emails between me and my contact. So this isn't something that Nintendo or Golan have wrote to send me. This is something that this person has chosen to say in regards to why I may not have qualified. There's three things. Passion for Nintendo. Hold on, where's my channel? Can I, can I bring that? Do I have to say anything? Is there a mistake? Like, is there something about this that doesn't scream passion? Am I, am I supposed to get down on my knees and make out with my Switch? <laughs> Alright. So maybe I don't have passion for Nintendo. A little salty. A little sad. It's just a little sad for me. Because it, feel, it feels like I did something wrong, and I'm still trying to figure out what it is. And I have theories, and we'll get to that next. Their social following. I'm not sure what this means. I'm not sure if this means how many followers they have, just total, or what their social following is like. Like, what their community is like, I guess. Um, let's tackle it from both ends. One, my community is freaking awesome. You guys rock. Um, like, I legitimately have one of the greatest... Uh, communities on YouTube, and I and I'm not just saying that. If if you've been around here, you can attest for it. Um, hey, if you've been following me on Twitch and watching my Twitch streams, you know firsthand how nice everyone is. We have mods in my Twitch streams, and we don't need them because everyone's so friggin' nice. And then let's let's talk about the amount. Now, I don't like talking numbers. We are getting close to a million subs. Smash that subscribe button. Um, and I don't I don't want to sound like I'm bragging at all, but let's prove a point here. 
I am coming up on a million subs. I am one of the largest Nintendo Switch channels. Kind of cringe for me to say that because it feels like I'm bragging, but let's not beat around a bush. I, I am. For what I do on the platform, it's very unique, I feel. I tackle a lot of different things. Most, 90% of it is all Nintendo-based and Switch-based, but I don't limit myself to any one thing because I have a short attention span and I can't do any one thing for too long. I have all these different playlists to try and group up the different things I do, from reviews to discussions to eShops to girlfriend challenges to my unboxing videos. Even my popular uploads are so different. Usually you shouldn't do YouTube like I do, but um, I think what makes what I do a little bit more successful than it should be is everything I do is backed by my personality. And I'm very aware of that. And it's something that it's very intentional because I love what I do on the platform. I love Nintendo. I love talking about Nintendo. But first and foremost, I want the videos to be backed by my personality. So no matter what I'm doing, you should be able to enjoy it if you're a fan of me because you're a fan of me. And I've intentionally done that as much as possible because I do cover so many different things and I have to do it that way. Because I split my audience down the middle so much, the only consistent, the only consistency between my channel is me. Which is actually a theory that I have as to why Nintendo dropped me. But anyway, the social following, we got that in spades. And then the last one is quality and brand friendliness of their content. I'm brand friendly. I mean, when Yoshi came out, my review for Yoshi was literally me and Kim making crafts from the game. Like, things like that, it's so what I feel Nintendo. And I do it not because I want to appease Nintendo, not because I want to make Nintendo happy, but it's because it's who I am. I've never catered my videos in any way to Nintendo. I've never tried to appease Nintendo with the way I make my content. This is just who I am. There's nothing about this that isn't family friendly. I know that my channel is rated PG with YouTube. It's not an M rated channel. It's, it's a family friendly channel. So I feel like I fall into this criteria, but Nintendo or Golan doesn't. So here are my theories. Here's what I think are the reason, uh, are possible reasons why they wouldn't want to work with me anymore. The number, the number one, the big one, um, I already talked about my personality. My personality isn't bad, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, but it's so heavily entwined in my videos, my face is in every thumbnail. It's gotten to the point where for a lot of people, wood from beat-em-ups is so closely related to Nintendo. I have become synonymous with Nintendo. For a lot of people I know, you can't really think of the Switch and not think of me. I've intertwined my personality, for better or worse, good personality, bad personality, family, family friendly or not, into my content and intertwined it with Nintendo. My dang logo has the Joy-Cons in it. And that could be a risk for Nintendo, and I get that. Because all it would take is my Jared from Subway moment. <laughs> Terrible to compare myself. That's not gonna happen! Uh, there's nothing like that that could happen, but uh, that's all it would take is a Jared from Subway moment where the one of the people, one of the main influencers so heavily tied to a very family-friendly brand um, does something stupid, has his PewDiePie on a bridge moment. And I get that. It might be scary, it might be a risk, and that could be why Nintendo wanted me to remove any association online with them as far as their actual program. They're still happy to send me games because they love what I do, but I'm a risk. And I get that. I don't feel like I'm a risk, but I literally am a risk in that sense. And I think that might be the biggest, I think that might be the case. That's my guess. And it does make sense, but it also, it does suck and it does hurt, I guess. That someone somewhere in marketing went, this guy, <laughs> don't trust him. <laughs> they said it was not my content, explicitly said it wasn't my content. Um, but if we were to assume they were lying, again, I'm not making an accusation. And I'm, this, is, this isn't even an assumption, it's just, well, maybe. And Kim, when I told Kim, she went, mm, maybe, is my uh, advocacy for mental health. I don't know why 
that would be a problem. Um, I don't know. That's not something Nintendo really associates himself with. It's kind of a weird juxtaposition in a way. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, but it's the only other part of my brand that I can think of that's so strong. Other than Nintendo, I think if you said like, what is, you know, tell me a little bit about Wood from beat em ups You know, well, he's a Nintendo YouTuber. He, you know, he suffers from depression. So he does charity live streams. I think that's just part of what people might see as my brand, which I'm perfectly okay with. Um, but maybe Nintendo isn't. And that would be kind of weird, but I don't think it's that. But I think if it is that, or in part that, I think that ties into the personality thing, where it is such a personality thing, and, you know, what if one day I have a complete breakdown, and, you know, it just looks really bad on Nintendo. That's my guess. So what does this mean going forward? Um, nothing really. Uh, it sucks for me. Big boohoo, right? But, uh, my content isn't gonna change. I pulled, I did a little bit of research to find out in the last three years since the Switch has been out, like what Nintendo, like being on the, ba the brand ambassador program, like what they, they did for me. And again, I'm not discrediting what they did for me. I, even if it was like one thing a year, I just loved being associated with them. Like it, it, again, my little kid, my little kid heart beated an extra beat for five years because of it. Cause I was so excited. The, the reality is they didn't do much. Um, it's just the reality. I'm not trying to be mean. So I wrote this up. So in the last three years since the Switch has been out, these are the games they've sent me. Uh, recently, as I said, 2K and Minecraft Dungeons sandwiched right in between the, you know, the, betra the harsh betrayal. I, I can't spell betrayal. That is how, that's totally how you spell betrayal. No, it's not. That can't be. All right, never mind. Don't look at that. I can't spell. <laughs> Before that, they sent me Dauntless like a week early, which was pretty nice, but it's a free game. So it's not like that would have changed my review too much. Uh, this year so far, that that's all. They literally didn't talk to me really all year until Minecraft Dungeons, and then the day later, they gave me the email. So I've got two this year, um, and then last year there was four. Uh, Dragon Quest, Lynx, Marvel, and Cadence of Hyrule. And then the year before that, Toad, Smash Bros, Wolfenstein, Octopath Traveler and Mario Tennis. Every one of these were launch day, other than Minecraft Dungeons was a day after launch. Every single one of these, I bought myself on launch day physical. Everything Nintendo has ever done for me, I have also owned, bought for myself. So literally nothing will change. Nintendo hooks me up on some occasions, but mostly the devs themselves don't go through Nintendo. They just reach out directly. Most games, I like think of the last time you heard me say, this game was provided by the dev team on Nintendo or whatever. It doesn't happen. I don't get review codes. Actually, I'm not salty about it because it's my own fault. Um, because I don't actively seek out codes. I'm so busy reviewing things. Um, that it, it just, honestly, even just with my eShop videos, I've done 21, right? 10 games in each. That's 210 games. Out of all of those, maybe 10 or 20 of those were review codes that I was lucky enough to get. But even if I was to try and reach out to all those different dev teams for review codes, I'd be waiting days for replies, weeks for replies. Like it's a whole gig in itself just to do that. I don't have time. It's so much easier for me to buy the game as soon as I see it and know that I want to review it. Support the dev team as well because they're mostly indie teams and I don't want to reach out for a review code all the time, especially if it's like a $5 game. Come on, just buy it, support them. Um, so I, most of the time I just buy them anyway. Like 90% of the time I buy all my games. And I do have to thank my Patreons for that. It's something I don't bring up much. And I have a giant support over on Patreon and I don't need any more. So don't feel like you have to. Um, but that's where Patreon comes in handy. That's how I can afford to buy literally hundreds of games that I review. It's because of Patreon. They also help me pay my editor. They help me buy new equipment and all of that. Patreon is a heaven sent and I wouldn't be able to do what I do without it. And that's how I do what I do. And I still have Patreon. That's not going anywhere. So, uh, Nintendo booting me from the program, uh, what I'm trying to say is nothing is going to change. So don't worry. All of this is backed with either my own money or support from the people that support my channel, but it's 100% backed, 100%, 110% backed by my pure, raw passion that I have for Nintendo. And it's made possible by my social following, 
every single one of you that subscribe and watch my videos make what I do possible. And thankfully, YouTube shares my videos out like crazy because I'm extremely family friendly. So we're gonna be just fine. <laughs> At the point when Nintendo asked me to remove any association with them, uh, I didn't wanna just remove all association quietly. Uh, I wanted to at least tweet about it and thank them for everything they'd done for me. And then when I did that, it raised a lot of questions, questions that I eventually got answers to and uh, answers that I wanted to make sure everyone saw. The main one being, nothing's gonna change. I'm really, really excited to get my reviews out of the 2K games of Xenoblade, of Outer Worlds, just everything I have on my plate right now. I'm working like crazy to get all these reviews done. It's a lot and I'm loving it and I will always love it. And I will continue what I do and until someone physically makes me stop. <laughs> and I don't know what that'll take because I love what I do. And thank you all for making it possible. I, I honestly can't thank all of you enough. Yeah, but that's it. I don't need anything from you other than just continually supporting me in whatever way you have been. If you're looking to, to do something that'll make me happy, I started streaming on Twitch and I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's a great time. So if you wanted to follow me over there, I'd appreciate that a lot. That actually make me really happy. You know, uh, hopefully, they said that they review channels on a case-by-case -case basis and, and maybe somewhere down the line they'll decide that I am right for their new program, like everyone else apparently was. But um, I'm telling you now, as much as I would love, I'd take it right now if you said, oh, we made a mistake, welcome back. I'd happily, happily, I'd be ecstatic and, you know, it'd be fine. Um, but my content ain't changing and, and I'm not becoming any kind of different person anytime soon and my content isn't going anywhere or changing anytime soon. So if I don't fit that program now, I ain't ever going to fit that program. And honestly, I'm okay with that. It sucks, but I would rather be me. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.